Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the ninth day of November 2022. I hope you're healthy and safe today. I hope your family is also healthy and safe and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those who work in the healthcare field and the first responders who every day are trying to save lives. And blessing also upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks, parks clean. And those also who make deliveries for our convenience and double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to rescue, deliver, and recover the teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. And the victims also of pornography and child pornography of prostitution and child prostitution. The victims also of human trafficking and sex slavery and double curses on the perpetrators, the profiteers, and all of those perverts that make this market and traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children that are on the streets right now and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them. For theirs is the kingdom. Also, brethren, please remember those people that are now in the path of Nicole, the latest hurricane coming out of the Caribbean and toward Florida, and those in the Caribbean as well as those in Florida and any other place that are projecting this may go north. Uh, you know, keep them in your prayers. Now, they're scheduled to be a basketball game tonight. And tonight is one of those rivalry games. So we know the Atlanta game was a rivalry game. And tonight against Brooklyn is always a rivalry game. Okay. For several reasons. Number one, it's in Brooklyn. And uh, it's basically an away game technically for the Knicks. But there's a lot. Of, I think there's, I would say, conservatively, there's an equal number of Knicks fans as there are Nets fans. In Brooklyn. And then, of course, there are pre past comments from people like Kevin Durant, negative comments about the Knicks, and then, you know, all of that. So it's a rivalry. And so we're playing them tonight in Brooklyn. Now, the Nets have been having some problems. They are four and seven right now. A lot of strife, a lot of internal issues. Um, they fired the coach. Uh, they fired uh, Steve Nash. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're really, they're about to hire. And we talked about this. We talked about this, um, when Ime Udoki, Udoka was, uh, Udoka, sorry, when Udoka was being let, was being let go by the Celtics, that he would be available. And I told you that. And now, see, the net scooping it right up. See, so, and that was, that's smart. <laughs> so that, there they go. They're going to be back on track sooner than later with this guy. But, Meantime, they haven't gotten it finalized yet. Jacques Vaughn is the uh, interim head coach. Uh, and so anyway, they're a bit, uh, you know, up and down their, their, their disarray, whatever you want to call it. But they're dangerous. They're still dangerous. And as a matter of fact, I can, like, if you look at their depth, like tonight, okay, so Watanabe is out. Um, Kyrie Irving is out and TJ Warren is perennially out, even when he was in Indiana. But they're going to have starting, you know, they have Patty Mills. They have Cam Thomas, who killed us at the Garden last year. They have Joe Harris. They have Seth Curry. They have, of course, Kevin Durant. They got Royce O'Neal, who they got from Utah. And, of course, Ben Simmons. And then at the five spot, they got Nick Claston. And, of course, they got Markeith Morris, a roughneck, one of the twins of Mars twin. And so they got enough. And, in fact, when you just look at the shooting, Kevin Durant, Seth Curry, Joe Harris, Patty Mills, they got plenty of shooting. OK, and so this is actually a better test uh, of the Knicks improved perimeter defense than Minnesota. See, so Minnesota was a comeback from Boston game, uh, but this is going to be more of a test of their perimeter defense uh, for the Knicks. So you got uh, Durant actually has not been shooting well from three, 33 percent, but that just means he's going to go off. You know, he's going to come back to the mean. He's probably a 40% shooter from three. Then you got Joe Harris, who just came back, and he's shooting 33%. So they're not shooting the greatest right now, but I would consider that a warning. Royce O'Neal is shooting 42% from three. Patty Mills is shooting 43% from three. Cam Thomas is shooting 46% from three. Kessler Edwards, well, he only he didn't even take a, a one a game, and Watanabe's out. So, and then, of course, there's Seth Curry, who's, you know, a great three-point shooter. 
you know, his name is Curry. <laughs> He's not his brother, but he is, he is a really elite shooter. So this is going to be a good test of the perimeter defense of the Knicks in term, in terms of improvement. Cam in the starting lineup. That's going to be good. I'm wondering, the only question tonight is if Thibodeau is going to start Hartenstein or is he going to start um, Jericho Sims at the five? Um, I would not be surprised if he started Jericho Sims. Hartenstein really works as he's in his in his element in mob D. OK, um, some of y'all was all, you know, some of y'all still hype and talking about, you know, he's better than Mitch Robb and he's just starting, blah, blah, blah. He's not as good as Mitchell Robinson. He's not a rim protector, Mitchell Robinson. He's not as athletic, athletic as Mitchell Robinson. You know, no. But he's a high IQ, hustler, grinded out, tough dude. A New York dude, okay? And he's perfect for the second unit. He's in his element. That's exactly where he needs to be. So if we, I think probably Tibbs will start Jericho Sims. He did good last, uh, last Saturday night in, in his first start of the season, and especially in his hometown. He'll be in Brooklyn today. I think if you start him again, he'll be better. Cam Reddish now is probably, you know, he's, this is his third game with the starting unit for, um, from Saturday night. They had practice. They've had games. He's getting acclimated. I think he'll be even better tonight in Brooklyn. Uh, the, and it's an ESPN game. And the thing about Cam Reddish is that the bigger the game on the national stage, the better butter being plays. So I am very excited about Cam Reddish tonight. So I'm predicting a Knicks win today. Uh, how big a win? It depends on the perimeter defense and the mood of one Julius Randle. When I say mood, did you guys notice on on, on Monday when they played um, the Minnesota Timberwolves how jovial, jovial he was, how loosey-goosey he was, how smiley he was? That's an indication that he's in a good headspace. And even when he started arguing with the refs too much, he was reeled in. Okay. And of course, all of that good jovial mood and everything, them jumpers started falling. See? So if it depends on the mood of Julius, <laughs> how hard this is going to be to win today. I mean, that's crazy to sound, but it is what it is. So I'm hoping Julius is in a good mood. I'm hoping he's feeling good. Got his home cooking with his fam. Uh, and that way, you know, they'll be ready to play tonight against uh, against the Nets. Then, of course, there's Obi Toppin. Now, some of y'all are worried because you just like to worry. No, but <laughs> no, but some of y'all worry because you're wondering how we're going to pay Obi, how we're going to pay Quick, how we're going to pay um, um, who else is there? It's Obi. There's Quick. Cam, how are we going to pay Cam, right? Some of y'all worry about how we're going to pay Cam, how we're going to pay Obi, how we're going to pay Quick. Some of y'all are concerned with how we're going to pay everybody, right? I got it. But y'all got to remember a couple of things. A couple of things. If you remember, let's take this past summer with the Donovan Mitchell situation. Now, it got to a point. Now, we know that Angel's asking for the world. Multiple players, multiple picks, you know, all of that. But when it got down to brass tax, I think a lot of us felt like the best deal was give him picks. And then he has like a couple of players to choose from, like two. Right. That's what we were looking at at the end. Give him multiple picks and maybe one or two players, two players. Right. I think that's the template for any deal we make to get a superstar. OK, that's the template. We got multiple picks so you can get three, four picks. And then you're going to get one or probably two players. Now, that is also why it's important that we play guys like Obi Toppin, that quick plays, that quick and grinds plays, that, you know, you know, these young guys get to develop and play. And then, of course, we're talking about Cam Reddish. Not that I'm looking to trade them, but let's say they all see, listen, because of the hate of our own players that, that Knicks Nation has, that's why all the time it appears, if you've been a long time fan, that we give up on a player or trade him and he plays better somewhere else. That's because he was never that bad. We made him bad. Okay. Cause we always hate our own players. That's how it is in Knicks Nation. Okay. So I'm telling you between Obi, Cam, Emmanuel Quickly, and who else? Those three, 
Let's not even talk about, we're not even dealing with Quentin Grimes and Deuce yet because that's two years. We got this whole season and two more seasons before we got to deal with them. But these other guys are coming up. So between those three guys, I'm telling you, at least two of them could pop up into a star. I'm telling you. Okay. So some of y'all don't believe that. But then again, some of y'all thought, oh, he couldn't shoot. And all he could do was dunk, right? <laughs> some of y'all thought Cam was lazy because the boy was just butter bean. You thought he was lazy. No, he's not lazy. Okay. So some of y'all just, uh, whatever. But I'm saying one, two of those dudes could pop into stars. Okay. Now, then the Knicks have a choice. You got Obi that's developed into a sub star ready to start somewhere quick. Already believes he could be a starter somewhere. And let me just say this about Manny quickly. Yes, he has froze out some of his teammates on the floor. Yes, he has, you know, had a little bit of a hog problem. But the boy is an NBA player. Okay. And I believe he can start for some teams. He just can't do it in New York. Okay. So between him, Obi, and Cam... You know, you got three dudes that's going to want to be starters if they not Cam's already a star. Okay. So, you know, somebody's going to want them. Okay. Now, I don't know who's going to go what, where, but I'm saying if a superstar is available, the Knicks will probably have to deal two players and a bunch of picks. Okay. That's how that's going to go. Okay. And so, that's why you play these guys to see what you got. If you got stars, you keep the stars, right? Like the Celtics. They, they drafted Jason Tatum. They drafted Brown. Listen, it wasn't that long ago that everyone was saying Brown don't have a jump shot. He's athletic. All he can do is dunk, go to the hole. He can't do anything else, blah, blah, blah. Look at him now. See? It wasn't long ago people were saying that. Okay? Now, Jason Tatum came out as a star. Everybody knew he was going to be the deal from, from when he was in Duke. That wasn't surprising. But, but Brown was a different story. And then, look, for the first six years of his career, I'm telling you, some of y'all may not. Marcus Smart couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. He was shooting in the 20s, 30s at best from three. But then all of a sudden, two years ago, started coming along. You know, Smart's like in his seventh season. It took him like five years, you know, to get to it. So they developed their dudes. And then Marcus Smart is now defensive player of the year. Okay? So the Knicks... I believe are on track to do that. And that's what the Don is doing with all the noise. Trade this one. Go get that one. Blah, 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 blah. He's not going for that. He's taking his time and having the Knicks develop their players. So the only real trade bait we have right now is Evan Fournier. And the obvious reason is there's not enough room. You have Crimes, Cam, and Fournier. Okay. You have all three of them. And then you have Quick, who also plays off guard. Then, of course, you have us the wing, you have RJ. So, there's not enough room. So, obviously, Fournier being 30, he's the odd man out. Okay? So, that's why, and that's all dependent on how quickly and how thoroughly Grimes comes back and is healthy. Okay? If he is healthy and he comes back, let's say, in the next 10 games, he's healthy and he comes back, Fournier's probably a goner. But that's the only dude right now. Everybody else, we just got to leave, let them run, let them develop. Let's see what happens. How far can we go with this squad? That's what we got to find out. So right now, we're not into, well, let's go get this one. Oh, this one's available. Let's go get this one. Some of y'all in continual NBA 2K mode. And this stupid thing I saw out there about trading away half the team and all these picks for the ambulance. Anthony, what is wrong with some of you? Anyway, no trades right now. We're trying to just let these dudes play and see what we got, okay? Tonight is Brooklyn. We beat Brooklyn. We got to be in good shape now, okay? So let's do this tonight. It's going to be on ESPN. Knicks Nation going to be in effect. We're going to see what happens. Y'all have a good Wednesday. So.